Rudy Giuliani, one of Donald Trump's many lawyers, was in Tel Aviv and he was asked about the situation involving Stormy Daniels and how Trump's fix it lawyer, Michael Cohen, had paid her $130,000 in hush money prior to the election. Now, he said some pretty disparaging things about Stormy Daniels when he was answering these questions, and many people are either outraged or defending him about these statements. We'll let you judge for yourselves. Let's take a look at what he had to say. She believes in her husband, she knows it's untrue. I don't even think there's a slight suspicion that it's true when you, excuse me, but when you look at Stormy Daniels. Uh, I know Donald Trump and Let's look, respect at his, him. look at his three wives, right? Beautiful women, classy women, women of great substance. Stormy Daniels, so I respect all human beings. I even have to respect, you know, criminals. But I'm sorry, I don't respect a porn star the way I respect a career woman or a woman of substance or a woman who has great respect for herself as a woman and as a person and isn't going to sell her body for sexual exploitation. So Stormy, you want to bring a case, let me cross examine you. So there are many things to address in that statement, uh, including whether or not he regretted saying those things. Uh, just a little hint, he didn't, he has only doubled down. But in the very beginning of that statement, he said she believes her husband. In that statement, he was referring specifically to Melania Trump. And interestingly enough, it was just reported that a spokesperson working for Melania Trump has released a statement indicating that Melania Trump has not spoken to Giuliani. And that is interesting information because it essentially says, well, Giuliani is not telling the truth there. I haven't had a conversation with him about whether or not I believe my husband. And it's probably implying one more thing, which is that she doesn't believe him, right? Th that, that's that, right. That obviously yeah. she accepts, meaning she understands that Trump had an affair uh, with this porn star. And she, uh, I'm not saying she approves of it, but she understands it as fact. Otherwise, why reach back and say anything about Giuliani, you could just let the comment pass. Right. But, but but I think too, as he's demonstrated in these comments, he is off the cuff, he is a loose cannon. So she probably doesn't know what else he's gonna say and attribute to her when they've never had a conversation. So maybe that's a good way of just trying to nip that in the bud real quick. That's a really great point, I didn't think about it that way. Um, so maybe that was an attempt at you know preventing any further damage that Giuliani could do. But you know, the Melania Trump portion of this is, is I mean, it just developed, so that's why I mentioned it first. But the bigger issue is Giuliani essentially criticizing Stormy Daniels, not just based on what she does for a living or how she's earned her money, but essentially saying that she's, I mean, he said, look at her, Yeah. right? She's not attractive enough for the president to have an affair with her. I mean, he, he tore her apart in so many disgusting ways. And I just found it incredibly ironic that he was on tape in front of all these people slut shaming someone when in reality he is a defense attorney for the biggest slut that's ever <laughs> been in the Oval Office, just keeping it 100. And what I mean by that is he's the first president who openly has had children by three different women. He has cheated on his wives very openly. It's well known information, this is not new. So the idea of looking at someone like Stormy Daniels and trying to discredit her because of what she has decided to do as her profession, again, is ironic considering who you're defending in the Oval Office. Yeah, Donald Trump's not some paragon of virtue, you're absolutely <laughs> exactly. right. He's he's slimy in almost everything he's involved in, and I don't even know why I threw the almost in there, I guess just to be <laughs> polite. But uh, from real estate deals to the way he's conducted his sex life, it's all had slime to it. So uh, it's not as though this guy just stepped out of bounds once, Donald Trump. He is somebody who lives his life out of bounds. So Giuliani is in a weird place when, uh, and I think it is indeed the case that he's a loose cannon. He just, he just fires off. And he just is on such thin ice when defending Donald Trump in any way associated with comportment and behavior and what's said. Uh, Donald Trump is the wrong guy to defend. You may want to defend him for being authentic, for being a bunch of other stuff, but Trump certainly isn't the guy who has behaved in any manner that's defensible. Yeah, he uses really bizarre strategies to try to get to a conclusion that is not justified by his argument. So he's trying to appeal to Christian moral values. Well, as we've talked about, 
Trump hasn't lived up to that. And then secondly, let's not forget his other sleazy, incredibly gross comment of um, grabbing them by the pussy. pussy. Yeah, I don't like to censor that because that's what he said. He didn't say grab her by the genitals, grab her by the kuka. He said <laughs> by the pussy. That's yeah. what he said. He is the president the, of the United, United States. States. He was on tape saying that. And he also said that he goes up to women and kisses them without permission. Right. I don't I, even ask them. I move in on them like a bitch. That's what the president of the United States said on tape. Just making that clear. <laughs> Thank you, exactly. Yeah. And he's trying to dovetail that with a notion of Trump being classy, like we've talked about. And so it just doesn't square. And then the other thing is that he was trying to connect his dismissal of her profession to uh, not being a feminist value also does not score. There have been many waves of feminism. We're, all, we're currently in an iteration where we're revisiting and debating what it means to do sex work and for what kind of power women find themselves and agency they find themselves within the sex industry. And this goes back like centuries to, there's a really great book, I should recommend you guys look at it, called Caliban and the Witch. And it talks about how women before the advent of capitalism use sex work to just have independent lives. And so he's just, I don't know what he's saying, basically. Well, I just, and it's a common misconception. It's not just Rudy Giuliani. People think that feminists and feminism, is it's like a monolithic group right, of people, yes. and it's not. There's a lot of disagreement among feminists even today on various issues, including whether or not sex work is uh, exploitative. And so, just keep that in mind. But by the way, Rudy Giuliani goes back to that point later. We have some uh, video of that. But the question was, hey, has Rudy Giuliani regretted what he said? I mean, he's in Tel Aviv. Maybe he didn't realize that there would be this much backlash. But in the age of the Trump administration, you don't apologize. You double down if you are part of the right wing. And that's exactly what happened when Dana Bash spoke to him over the phone and asked him, are you going to apologize about this? Take a look. He didn't realize how big of a thing it was, and I explained why. And he, he initially pushed back saying, well, in my day, feminists didn't like porn because they thought it was demeaning to porn, uh, to, to women, excuse me. And then he said, I still stand by what I said, what I said. And I said, well, take the feminism aside and just talk about your main point, which is that she doesn't have credibility as a witness. And he said he completely stands by that. And let me just give you part of our conversation. Uh, he said the following, if you're involved in a sort of slimy business, it says something about you, says something about how far you'll go to make money. A person who would say no isn't going to do something very demeaning like that for money. A person who would do that for money, a real point about her is that she's not just generally uncredible, she's credible from the point of view of wanting to get money. She's a con artist. Yeah, never mind our politicians who will risk the lives of our soldiers, of our members of military, just to make weapons manufacturers wealthy, just so they can protect their campaign donations. That's not in any way loathsome. But someone who does sex work, oh, that's something that should discredit that individual. By the way, this is exactly the reason why women don't come forward in cases like this and cases where they have been victimized by sexual assault or rape. Because this is exactly what attorneys do. They attack their character. They do all sorts of character assassination in an effort to discredit them. And that is what Rudy Giuliani is doing right out in the open right now. Yeah, it's, it's so despicable what he's doing. He's doing so many things that are awful at one time. And as Anna says, he's smearing Stormy Daniels. Almost gratuitously, you know, we all know Stormy Daniels by now. There's a suit underway, there's been a payoff. All of these things are sort of demonstrably in evidence. And so he really is just padding his part by going overboard to uh, smear her. It, it, he's not going to get any sort of political capital for doing it. The only thing I, I was trying to think, why is he saying this stuff? And I figured he's trying to curry greater favor with the boss, Donald Trump. Yeah. And so Trump can say, hey, Rudy. I heard those comments you made about uh, Stormy Daniels, good work. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, otherwise I don't really see what political gain you're getting or if there's any other benefit. Yeah, there's definitely what the public doesn't know that's going on behind the scenes is that there's a political game between 
people and the administration for how close they can get to the either the ear of the president or have future positions that they can get. So all this sort of stuff is very self-serving. So we have to take that into account when we read these, these comments that, again, what do they contribute in terms of the discussion around the Stormy Daniels case? Nothing except, as you said, smearing her character completely with age-old 1950s arguments. Yeah, and my look, my concern is not just about what he's doing to Stormy Daniels specifically, but what he is doing in terms of setting America back in their perspective on women yep. and what is and is not acceptable behavior. So, you know, essentially stripping women of their independence and their ability to choose, their free will to choose what they do. Look, and here's another thing that I wanted to quickly mention. I see a lot of people on the left, at least on social media, some members of um, the news, various news organizations commenting about what Melania Trump used to do for a living. She was a model. There are some you know, examples of her modeling scantily clad, nude. Don't attack Melania Trump in an effort to defend Stormy Daniels because you are stooping to Giuliani's level there, right? What Melania Trump did for a living was fine, and it's not something that's worth criticizing, and I feel the same way about Stormy Daniels. Again, don't stoop to their level. Right, right, it's just worth demonstrating the hypocrisy of the yeah. arguments that they make, which is they're trying to attack and project um, so, um, moral judgments on other people, while at the same time, they are living out those scenarios. Right. So well, I think, yeah. I was just gonna say this, and I think you're, you're right to hint at a kind of a worldview that's mired in 1950. That's what we have in this administration. They have this view of women, they have this view of porn, they have this view of the evolving role of uh, immigrants in our society, uh, of the military, everything is 1950. Just click in to 1950, that's the worldview. And so Giuliani's comments, even down to Stormy Daniels, reflect 1950 male values with a kind of chauvinism and a, a rudeness about this woman. And, and, and again, I mean, it's not, it's not as though we know Stormy Daniels so well, but we know that these comments that Rudy Giuliani made, uh, makes are, are rude. And again, they reflect a 1950 worldview, and yeah. that is what the Trump administration is all about. Yeah, and it's an expected consensus. You heard the reaction from the crowd when he said, look at her, look at Trump's other wives. And he was expecting everybody to be in full agreement. And yes, there was some clamor in the crowd, but that's what he's operating from. And if you are expecting innovation, if you are expecting a vision of a different world with these guys at the helm, then I'm sorry, that's, you're they gonna be don't. rudely disappointed. I know, but they're not looking for a different <laughs> yeah, it's world. True. I mean, they've experienced a different world and they wanna go, go back. back. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so that 1950s broken world view of, of the role women should play and the behavior that they should and shouldn't engage in, that's something that I think would probably do well with Trump's base. But I think the question is for those who are kind of in the middle, who are turned off by, you know, the, you know, the status quo, I mean, there's the status quo and it's terrible, you need to change it. There's no question about that, but we got the wrong kind of change. We moved backwards. Right. Two easy ways to follow Young Turks. One is hit the subscribe button down below, uh, then you're a TYT subscriber. And second is ring the bell. And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.